So for today's video, we are going to be deck testing a, a deck that's quite frankly been kind of popular on the ladder as of late. I know that Warrior 7 has been playing a version. I know that Dust has been playing a version. Uh, I also played a version on stream a few nights ago. Uh, this is the Ramp Slay Warrior. Uh, I got the deck list up. Uh, this is just a deck testing video, not a full spotlight, so I'm not going to go over every card, but the quick gist of it is uh, you're using uh, a lot of creatures that have very powerful slay effects, so things like Venom Tongue, Defiler, Cicero, Blood Magic Lord, Night Talon Lord. This is my own personal spice. The deck doesn't normally run this, but you're using those cards to then also combine with the new Sword of the Inferno and Quicksilver Crossbow to get yourself a lot of value. Um, and then Unstoppable Rage on something like Vigilant Giant or Night Shadow is also uh, like a secondary win condition in a way that you can take advantage of all that ramp. Um, again, this is not the normal version. I've got my own uh, few minor additions for Spice. I'm running one Hist Grove as an alternate win condition. I'm running the one Night Talon Lord, like I said. Uh, I'm running the Night Mother. So again, mine's a little bit different, but the, the core is mostly the same throughout. And uh, like we do always with these deck testing videos, we're going to go ahead and dive in and we're going to play two games, win or lose, and kind of uh, share with you the results. Uh, as I said, I have already played this a bit on stream and when I was playing it, it was a lot of fun, which is why I wanted to play it here. Uh, I'm currently six and three with like different variations of the list. I've been putting things in, taking them out like you do in your deck testing. I don't think that there's like a quality refined list that exists. I do also admit that part of the appeal of this deck is just being able to do silly, meme things with it. And as such, I'm probably nowhere near playing close to a, an optimal or refined list. All right, that's a lot of ramp, but I think we're gonna keep it. So we're up against Fierce Infinity. If you're not familiar, Fierce Infinity is a fantastic player. Uh, was in the Master Series Finals. Does like to play mid Daggeth, so I would not be shocked if that's uh, what we are up against here. And mid Daggeth is not our best matchup. So this might not go very well for us. Didn't see this coming, eh? We see you waking and sleeping. Yeah, definitely appears to be the the waters of life mid version that we were kind of expecting and I don't know what we're gonna do about that with the hand that we have and keeping the ramp was probably correct we need to ramp into powerful plays uh, if we can get lucky and maybe hit a dark harvester prophecy I was just about to say then we have a shot that's huge it's very very huge we have to hope that they don't have like a uh, ancestor or Okay. It's actually really good for him as well. Um, this is going to be good for us with the Venom Tongue as potential removal. The waters of life. So I think that for right now, we just ramp. Actually, I think putting this here, as much as I want the ramp on the Venom Tongue with the sword, I can take out both of these with it, which is just good enough, I think. Like, being greedy is important, but so is also just making sure that you pull a lot of damage off the board. Because that opens us up for either another Harvester from Hand this next turn, or Venom Tongue plus Mastermind, which I think is also entirely reasonable. Have you come to submit yeah. or come to die? Let's see what this draws us no first before we decide we what to do. Anticipate. With our Venom Tongue. It's actually kind of a tough call. I mean, I guess we'll take that because we might need it a little bit later. Claws are sharp and thirsty. We're putting this here in hopes that we find a crossbow or another sword to deal with the hand. You know, maybe taking that other rapid shot might have been correct. Just playing that. So now 
Now it makes me look like a genius, but in hindsight, we could have rapid shotted this, traded here, used the second rapid shot to ping that, and then. Friend. Then hit the sword, but. Alright, let's go ahead and see what this draws us. A lot of options here. A lot of options. So again, sword takes this out and helps us ramp a little bit. The downside is it takes this out as well. It does deal the lethal damage to itself. And then it's probably just jam a guard in front of this, I imagine. We'll see how they like someone who fights back. It is our best option. Strongly considering just developing this as well, it's just a matter of do I want to develop both over here? Or do I want to try to soak this two damage? I think both over here is probably fine. There's a strong chance that they have some sort of removal for one of the guards. The other reason I was considering not doing that is because we're very susceptible to Cradle Crush or even just a lane shift. Both of those would be problematic. But it's also really important that we try to get rid of this Mournhold, so... We're taking a gamble, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's a strong argument for this being not the correct play. Because while not every Middagath runs Cradle Crush, uh, I run it in my list, and it's certainly a really powerful inclusion. And our opponent's doing a great job of getting value plays as well. You'll notice Fierce here still has four cards in hand with two bodies on the board. And they're on the ring, so they are, they are up in terms of uh, card value on us. So this next turn, we're going to be pretty severely hoping. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a crossbow that would have been nice. Let's see what this draws us. We're really going to be hoping that they do not have... some kind of silence for our 8-8 eight eight here. So now we're faced with the, do we save the crossbow for some additional slay value sadly this is really only plus two so it doesn't allow this trade but could use it to ping this ward crafter which potentially makes this survive which does feel pretty important snickermancer is going to be nice because it can fetch us another harvester from discard pile so i do think this is what we want to do here we're going to go ahead and ping this. We're going to put this here so it gets this back down to two. So if we play this here and the Dark Harvester pops up, then it potentially trades. We don't trade the damage in because we're trying to soak. Again, removal or a silence or something ruins our plan. So there is an argument to be made about being proactive, but we're trying to protect our life total here. So um, obviously, like Leaf Lurker uh, is a problem. Silence is a problem. But uh, Fierce here might also be potentially not wanting me to rage this. So even if he doesn't have a way to clear this, he might suicide into it. All right, so he's got a... Oh, okay. Plus the Harpy. Not bad, not bad. And we do pick up a rage, though it doesn't really help us a ton right now. And we're one magic a shy of doing like awesome tricks. I think. I will keep Sota We're gonna play the Galen and a Necromancer. It's just a question now of do I want to shuffle in more dark harvesters or necromancers? And I feel like necromancer still is the correct play. Rise, my servant. 
With only two runes left, I don't think Harvester is correct. If we had, like, three or four runes left, then I would have just jammed more Prophecies into our deck. But by doing it this way, we also... I mean, I have to assume Cliff Racer eats this and we, we soak at least six. With two cards in hand, we're hoping that uh, this survives and that we can get our, our trades in coming, eh? as necessary here. Trade Harvester Hisgrove next turn looks like a really attractive play, unless we are forced to rage for some reason. So, let's go ahead and get that off the board. And let's go ahead and get this off the board. There's an argument to be made here about value trading. So we're going to do it. So we're going to drop another Harvester and a Hisgrove. Set ourselves up for some potential 8-8s this next turn. And uh, this is our last Harvester, so we can't rely on them for Prophecies, because this did not shuffle any more back. But we're doing a, a pretty good job of trying to stabilize here. It can be hairy against mid-range decks, specifically uh, Dagath, because they have a lot of big threats, but then they also have a lot of burst or reach at their disposal. So, hey, uh, speaking of big threats and reach, surprise! Big threats and reach, huh? All right. So we have a couple of different options are at our disposal. <gasps> Running this over means we still don't break a rune, so we're fine with that. <gasps> and if we use this crossbow here, we can clear out the Tazcad and then set up a potential rage. The other option is we could just, like, essentially double Dark Harvest over there. Like, this could trade here. It's kind of an interesting dilemma that we have. Because we really do kind of need to get rid of the Tazcad. Um, as such, I think what we're actually going to do is we're just going to rage. Because the Tazcad has the breakthrough, so when this gives us the 2-1, uh, if we don't get rid of the Tazcad, we have, we're forced to deal with that proper. And then we'll just uh, hard cast this to get some more health back. Throw another wall up over there. Again, just shows you the the value that mid Dagath can generate because we have not broken a rune and they are still uh, doing very well in terms of card advantage compared to us. I mean, we're at a point where we technically threaten lethal with what's on the board if they don't hit prophecies. I think that's what he's doing now. He's kind of doing the math. And there's a, a strong chance that we push for that if our board survives as is. But I suspect we're going to lose uh, at least this Vigilant Giant, right? Good chance he's got maybe a Lightning Bolt, maybe another Cliff Racer or something that he was saving for burst potential. But potentially going, you know, I, I don't want to die. So maybe they throw it in. Maybe it's an aspect of the Hercene that they don't want to burn. You can see Fierce over there counting, doing the math, mousing over the cards. I keep a spare blade in my boot. So 
there's a quartermaster. Of course, I'm on your side. And a trader. So far, so good for us in terms of trying, trying to shoot for our lethal. Okay. Guide me. So he's he's putting putting his hands. Putting his hands in uh, take you. prophecy. Uh oh, prophecy. No harpy. No harpy. Lightning bolt, we're fine. But harpy's a problem. By the aid of fire. Wow. Very close game against a very good deck piloted by a very good player. And honestly, just a really nice person. Um, Fierce Infinity was one of the nicest, most genuine people that I got to meet at the Master Series. So we're going to go ahead and jump into game two. See if it lets me respond while this is. Uh, going. Well, I guess I'm going to have to wait till I jump into a game. It let me click on it, but then he wasn't showing up in my, my friends list. Boo. I think I'm jumping into a game now. Alright, so now it looks like we're going to be up against Halalu, but I do want to respond. Because, like I said, Fierce is a, a wonderful person, and I don't want him to think I'm ignoring him. And... This is interesting. If I had anything to activate with these, I would feel pretty confident. I think the rapid shot goes back, but I might save these. Because, honestly, all of these are... Beautiful if I find like a Barrow Stalker. Uh, instead, I do not find it though. Immediately punished for my greed. There's a strong argument to have been made about maybe throwing back another sword. All right, so they they passed. Hold them back, Scourge Stumpet. There's that Barrow Stalker we were hunting for. We'll see how they like someone who fights back. I will take the blood. So, uh, good old, stand. good old Fierce Infinity there is saying that he's been playing Dwemer most of the month, and that he really wanted to run Dwemer against me. Which does sound like cheeky fun. Um, I think I develop a Barrow Stalker. I'm just trying to decide if I, I do anything more this turn. And I think the answer the is living. no. I, I think we just don't overcommit. Kind of interesting to see just two prophecy it's cards out of our fun. Halalu opponent yet. And then Arrow Storm. All right, so I am... Um, legitimately thoroughly puzzled at this point. Let's heat things up. Greetings. Gonna go this route so that we have some backup in case they have a, a cheap charger or something for the 4-1. We want to be able to take care of that tier. Arrow storm, huh? Like I said. This one recommends a clear yeah, and another prophecy card. This makes me feel like this was just prophecy Halalu. Uh, interesting, we got some tools in our toolbox. Skaven clears the tier, but Barrow Stalker would be beautiful with that sword. So we kind of have a decision to make. And there's a strong part of me that really wants to do the Barrow Stalker, because short of removal, then the following turn we can drain a ton of health. Like, it's a big gamble, but the risk is so impactful. 
that I think you have to do it here. If I get punished, I get punished, but we're gonna we're gonna go for the big risk, big reward. Face my claws. We must help the people of Vardenfell. And the dude, huh? Alright. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and drop a sword on this and nuke this. And then we're gonna use this and nuke this. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, target over here to get our grain in there. And then we might as well whack him. So, downside is they do get uh, the card from the Duke. Not a lot I could really do about that, but we gained a lot of health. If they're determined to be an enemy. I mean, at this point, are we just playing for Night Mother? Hold my power. <laughs> oh, I guess we're not because of Rothgar Forge, huh? Yuck, 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 yuck. Well, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Yeah, I guess we're not, huh? Rothgar we'll Forge, uh, like it's been so long back. since I've played against it, I forgot that it wrecks the Night Mother pretty effectively. Well, I can't think of a scenario here where you don't just gale in your sword, right? Right? I mean, maybe I could see an argument for Night Shadow instead of Sword. How many swords do we still have in there? One more? Actually, I actually think it might be Night Shadow. I will keep Sotha Sil's people alive. We're gonna get to draw some cards too, and there's nothing I can do about it. I guess I could have used a sword to stop it, but. It just felt like a really low value protect our strong stop. Close up the uh, the Hiss Grove. Ooh. Oh, it doesn't blow up the Hiss Grove. Interesting. Heirloom Greatsword's a bit of a uh, problem. I'm not going to lie. Repel the Outlanders. I guess we'll see if they're running like Dawn's Wrath or something. As long as I do <sighs> This is a really interesting deck because it's basically like a million prophecies and then Rothgar Forge for prophecy value. I mean, in case you're wondering, that's that's what's going on here. Which is the only reason why, even though we're running out of cards, we legitimately might be able to still just stall this out. Although this is the real problem. I feel like uh, some Dushnik archers would go a long way. Wow! The value is real. I mean, Defiler is a really good play with that Rage right now. But I could be greedy and wait and hope for a low roll on the Forge. Hmm. It's 
kind of a tough call because I got a feeling that the forge isn't going to low roll, but it's kind of our only hope. I don't think that a giant by itself would be enough to get back in this, but if I can pull both a giant and a necro, then things look a whole lot different. Oh! Oh, it hurts. We can't anticipate. All right, so instead we're gonna try this. The hiss shall heal you. That's a big dude. Oof! That's the second arrow storm. This is a second arrow storm, and we are being very effectively punished by it. So, like, I can night storm and rage, or uh, night shadow and rage, excuse me, if I want to gain some health. See, the problem with the arrow storm is, is that meant that I couldn't uh, use rage to kill my own creature, which was the real goal there. And if he has anything that charges, I'm basically dead because of the Devil Rothgar. Which is, of course, very problematic. I mean, I really don't want to just use my first rage like this, but... Because even if I clear this thing and just drop uh, Heirloom Greatsword over here as well. This is not great right now. It'd be nice if I didn't have to use the Rage and I could use Sword on at least one of these. But I cannot. I think I'm stuck passing and hoping he doesn't have something with charge. I think that's the only thing that I can do. He or she, excuse me. You have met your end. Let none defile our temple. That is going to be a big and of course it got ward then creates a whole different set of problems now doesn't it so the goal was I was going to gain extra health from this by, by just playing the night shadow wherever they doubled up on creatures but I can't do that in rage now and if I nuke this I'll gain 9 and go to 14, so they still need 2 damage because they have the Greatsword. Greatsword's so problematic. It is still my only out, though, so I think that I have to take this path. Bye. Yeah, given that ward was not great for me. Probably costs me the game. Good old Rothgar. Just just prophecy halalu. But double Rothgar and double Arrowstorm ended up being the MVPs Let none here. Our I'm actually really shocked that they didn't pop the uh, heirloom down. <laughs> why why wouldn't it have also been Dawnbreaker? Why wouldn't it also be Dawnbreaker, huh? Well, let's see what this draws me. Start there. Claws are sharp 
than festive. And I'm still dead no matter what here. I mean, there's legitimately nothing that bails me out because of Heirloom Greatsword. So, uh, we had a fantastic showing against Fierce Infinity. And then, uh, we just lose the memes! Double Rothgar Forge, Prophecy Halalu, with Double Aerostorm. Uh, with both Aerostorms mattering. I think that's like the biggest slap in the face. It's not like, oh, they're also running Aerostorm. Both Aerostorms mattered, like legitimately mattered. Uh, I also don't know what to do against just randomized Dawnbreakers when you're trying to get back in it, so. Anyway, I hope, hope you enjoyed it, because, uh, wow. Wow. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, may you walk on warm sands.